Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Bro, and it's time to review Blitz. This is the new film by Steve McQueen, and it follows a mother and her son who are separated during the London Blitzkrieg in World War II, when London was bombed a lot. I really liked this film. I think what it is trying to do is weave a broad tapestry of society at the time of this event, how people worked together in some ways and how in other ways, especially like across racial lines, like people are not so keen to come together. I expect the mythology around this event involves a lot of like, oh, you know, Londoners really came together. There was so much unity at the time. And I think Steve McQueen is telling the story of, yes, that did happen. And there's some really beautiful moments where you can see people supporting each other and trying to do their best among the darkness by finding each other. And there are also moments, given the fact that there, there's a biracial character at the center of this movie, where we see that that does not apply everywhere. And I like that we got this World War II piece that doesn't just focus on soldiers who went and fought for war. This is about the women who stayed and became factory workers for the war effort. And also about children who are innocent victims, as well as being about black people who are often erased from events like this. I thought there was a lot of care and attention paid to all these perspectives. At the same time, both of the leads don't feel like their characters are very deep. Like, we're not really diving in that much, and by the end, I think you can feel it where there's not a lot where the characters can go. Like, all they can do is either find each other or not, and they're struggling a little bit less on the inside than with that physical goal of finding each other. And I think this is where a lot of people are going to have criticisms of the film, but where I really think it's strong is in its ability to capture the panorama of experiences during this event. In some ways this makes sense as a follow-up to Small Axe, which was five portraits of London during the same time period. And the film makes some great snapshots of different events and movements and cultural places during this time. There was even a minute of this film where I thought I was watching Lovers Rock. Yeah, there were like two sequences with a lot of dancing and music that I felt this way. And the film has many scenes that are based around song and music. And I think that's part of the theme of uniting. And those scenes were all really powerful for me. I thought this film was only powerful in glimpses. I think many will feel that it could have touched deeper into certain areas and just spent more time in places. I don't know that it suffers from being a tapestry, but perhaps the movie is restrained by trying to tell the story through these two lead characters because it unfortunately doesn't seem like McQueen's priority was to flesh out his main characters. Mainly the boy is a vehicle for us to experience and wander around the city and meet different kinds of people. And I guess the character development is that we see what he sees and so we're internalizing what he's internalizing, which is a way to tell the story of a character. And I guess telling a story that way actually does make sense with McQueen, given how he likes to rely on immersing you in a character's experience to really understand them. But I don't know, it wasn't that compelling and I felt that the direction and performance of the boy was just all right. I just felt like I was watching his resting face for most of the performance, even though Elliot Hefferman does sell it really well in certain moments. I liked Saoirse Ronan a lot in the film too, but it felt like she was just kind of dealing with something here, then she goes over and does a little bit of something else, and there wasn't much of a through line for her character, and in general, there's not much of a progression throughout the movie. It feels like a series of vignettes, but very little escalation. But this also does feel a bit more conventional, generic, sort of Oscar bait, than anything Steve McQueen has done before, and I think some will feel a bit jarred by that. I do think that his flourishes show up, and I wouldn't go so far as others have to say that the film feels anonymous, because even the more I look back on it, I do see his stamp. I don't think that there are as many standout images or shots like there are in some of his films, but I did think that the sort of Oscar Beatty generic war film vibe took me out of it just a little bit. I think especially in the dialogue, there are one or two moments where it feels like it's delivering a message a bit too much. I mean, the film does walk the audience more through this film than his others do, and it's more palatable and audience friendly. He's working with a bigger budget. He's trying to, it seems, get everybody to see this film for it to be a historical document of this event which he cares about, a story which he wants to tell in a very broad way. Like, he's kind of trying to represent everybody. And so I understand that choice to tone down the more audacious 
parts of your filmmaking instincts. Like, I remember I, it, in Widows, there were many more moments where I was like, wow, that that scene was incredibly done. Like, the cinematography was crazy. That choice was amazing. You're not going to find that as much. I don't know if I agree with your assessment that watering down his style is a reasonable choice because he wants it to go to a wider audience. That makes a lot of sense, though. 12 Years a Slave reached a very wide audience, and I don't think that there were any instincts that were watered down there. Or Mangrove even sure. was like a, a, a pretty palatable yeah. movie. Would I have preferred something a little more audacious? Sure, I, I think I would have. But I understand like why it was done. And I still think he authors this movie enough. And I certainly think, given the script, that a lot more was done than could have been done. The overall story from the script is not super memorable, and it really is in the execution. Whether the movie is going to stick, whether the scenes are going to hit as hard. And I think it's really important to acknowledge the care that's given to telling the stories of the black people at the time, because that really would have been lost with non-white directors. So it doesn't feel like that is buried. Like, I think a lot of what he wanted to say, he is very clearly saying. Maybe it's more so with the style and the execution that it was meeting in the middle. But certainly I think what he wanted to get across was pretty clear. I also couldn't help but to feel that the film was a bit unchallenging in that it's very obvious when the movie wants you to be like appalled by something or someone, and it's very clear when the movie wants you to feel like warm. And there's really nothing in the middle. There's not a lot of gray area in this movie. Either characters are assholes or they're like really kind souls. Like the Stephen Graham character, that was a bit cartoony to me. I, I think when you talk about that plot with Stephen Graham, I, I agree that it was a little too cartoonish and it didn't quite match tonally. I think that Steve McQueen did pack in a number of powerful moments here and did a lot of justice to telling this story from different vantage points. Though, I'm not sure it all feels that focused in that I can't help but to want a bit more from some of the places that he narrowed in on. And the broad portrait, I think, feels a bit too simple to me. Especially this mother-son story. In retrospect, I also look at that and I look at like this primal need for these two to come together and find that warmth and think that that actually does feel very Steve McQueen for his characters to want something very basic and humane that they have to fight for. I want to shout out Benjamin Clementine here, who I think is a really good supporting performance. He was really strong here, probably my favorite supporting performance. Saoirse Ronan is also really good. She has a really nice voice. She sings in a few scenes and those I think are some of the best scenes with her in them. You know, her character is pretty simple, so I don't know if it's like a memorable character. To touch on the technical aspects of this movie, it's very well put together. The sets feel sprawling and huge. There was a lot of detail with certain things like how the bunkers and the subways were inhabited. A lot of major set pieces, like homes that are just in smithereens. It just felt very epic. The costumes I also thought were a standout, surprisingly. The sound and the score, were some of the most buzzed about elements that people were speaking of after the film, especially in the way that it weaves sound and score together and where Hans Zimmer is mimicking the sounds in the score. This was very tastefully used. I think the craft in the sound work is also where McQueen is showing some of his authorial vision and power. I did feel that the sound was a little too screeching at times. Like I understand why it was like that. It was a creative choice but I was maybe sitting a little bit too close to the screen to appreciate it. It was to like viscerally just move you and, and make you go like, oh my God, I'm so anxious. For my taste, it was a little much, but I get why they did it. I like that they went really hard on the sound work and the sound work is great even in the quieter scenes as well. Overall, I'd give this film a solid eight out of 10. I'll go up to a seven on it. Now we gotta talk about Oscars yeah. because we've had this film in our predictions, not just this year, but in years past, this year it's been in our top 10 the entire year. Were we right to have it in our predictions? I definitely think so. It's the sort of film where even though a lot of people are mixed on it, it's a little too big to fail. It's so up the alley of the typical Oscar voter. It's checking so many boxes. It has that social relevance, that social importance and commentary. It's portraying a piece of important history. It's got a lot of great crafts. And you got Sir Sharon in anchoring it, who has been nominated a lot. Like, there's just so many ingredients here that are working well. Yeah. And the film does feel very big. It feels like this is going to work really well with Academy voters and especially BAFTA voters. A lot of people are underwhelmed with the film, and it seems like on Letterboxd, you know, the range is really three to four stars for most people. I mean, that's right. where we landed, too. I and even a lot of people I talked to 
think this is towards the bottom, if not the bottom, of Steve McQueen's filmography. He's got a great filmography, so it's not even that big of a diss. But I think that it'll work on the Academy well enough. The movie's easily getting production design, costumes, sound. Those are obviously locked. Yes. I think score is a maybe. Score is a maybe. It's been talked about a lot. That would Hans be a Zimmer. double nomination for Hans Zimmer, which is... You know, it hasn't happened in a while, but it has happened. No, it a has happened. Times. It, it happened a few years ago with Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. Oh yeah, the score doesn't have as memorable of themes as Dune does, but there are moments, certainly many moments in the film where you notice it and you think, "Wow, th this is really." Great, I love Hans Zimmer's work here. We'll see if people go out really hard for it or not. It's kind of a wait and see to me. Yeah. Cinematography, I was not sold. I think it was solid work, but it didn't reach the heights, I think, of mm. some of Steve McQueen's other films. It's a very well-crafted movie. The cinematography is front and center. But it might not get nominated is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's not like I, all I think... quiet on the Western front where you see it and you're like, that's obviously like a cinematography movie. That's kind of on the bubble for me. The screenplay was definitely a weak point from the perspective of almost any, everybody I've talked to. Yeah. And it makes me wonder if the film could even miss original screenplay, depending on the competition. It could also just make its way in there. You know, we've had films like 1917. Did anybody talk about how good the screenplay was for that? No. We had Maestro get in, even though people thought that could maybe miss. It could maybe yeah. just get in, yeah. as long as the film is a best picture staple. Directing, I could see Critics' Choice and BAFTA nominating this for director, actually. But I don't know if it would get Oscar. I think it needs to be closer to the top five. I and I also definitely see the Oscars as being more stringent about you need to make a movie that looks like an autorial vision. And this is sort of a compromise. So, And then picture, if this year were really crowded, like if it were last year, I would be worried about Blitz. I've moved this to like number seven. This is a very... Solid shot. I think Saoirse Ronan is good enough to be nominated here. As long as the movie's in Best Picture, she makes sense. She'll totally get nominated. It's, it's, it's definitely not one of the most layered characters she plays, but her character does have enough screen time. The, has again, a lot of moments. I think it's the singing scenes where she really shines and she's going to be remembered. Well, actually, we could even throw that in real quick, is that there's an original song. Yeah. I think that the one she sings on the radio yep. in this film is yep. original. Yep. It's in the movie. I, we'll see. Always I mean, helps. I have to say that Saoirse Ronan's voice is very good. Yeah. She could literally be a singer. I don't know if that gets in. It's a very short song. It was nice, though. It was poignant. It was one of the more moving parts of the film. That's just a hard category to call. Also, visual effects is something that I've seen some pundits put in or flirt with, and I don't think that's happening unless there's more done with it than I thought that there was. And I mean, there were definitely obvious VFX shots, yeah. filling in backgrounds, creating the destroyed city. Yeah, there was a lot fires, of visual effects in it. A uh, plane crash. I didn't think any of it was particularly stunning on a level yeah. I haven't seen before. Like, and you can tell when there are green screens. Let's put it that way. Well, when they're on the top of the train, I thought it was pretty damn obvious. Yeah, but there are other scenes when I can, I, I just know that the background is, is oh, yeah. green screened. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as being an all quiet or 1917 type situation. We've learned our lesson from saying oh this is a movie that's getting nominated for a bunch of oscars already and it has visual effects well they'll nominate that we've learned our lesson dunkirk shape of water and poor things was an example last year like that's what this but is we have like. unlearned it like you said with 1917 and all quiet on the western front my prediction is that critics choice are going to nominate it yes and that you shouldn't freak out about that you shouldn't yes. be like oh my god that means it's getting in so i'm predicting it for five nominations maybe six with the song uh, maybe or five, the screenplay five six. Oh, oh yeah you know, i would predict screenplay right now oh you would yeah right. six is is fine eight is like its best day and that's it for our thoughts on blitz thank you for watching thank you for subscribing do you wish sir sharonin was your mommy and sang to you